I want to teach you guys again, give you a little bit of a, uh, a review for some of you, and maybe it's the first time you've ever seen it. Some of you guys may never have seen this before. So let me uh, put the battery here. Okay. There's the battery. And the way that the starter circuit looks is there's this big set of contacts going in to the starter and then the starter goes to ground okay so that's the basic circuit right there okay we got power ground load and switch that's true of every circuit okay so the question then becomes if we have 10 volts on a good day that's being held by the battery during crank now the only reason we're doing this test obviously is because the starter sluggish right we know those sounds um, the question is where should the energy go and what is voltage drop voltage drop is energy consumed by resistors Um, now, anything that slows current down is a resistor. Well, the only resistors we want in the circuit are the resistors that do things, like the motor, right? The ground doesn't do anything, the wire doesn't do anything, the connections don't do anything, the switch doesn't do anything, except complete the circuit. And this wire shouldn't use anything, and our ground return path shouldn't use anything. Okay, so, specifically, what are we looking for? Well, what we're looking for in the in the entire circuit is one voltage drop right there okay so no drop here no drop here no drop here no drop here 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 or anywhere through here or any through any of these connections if we want one nothing 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 everything okay well how do you how do you test that you test it by using a voltmeter and you put the leads on either side of the uh, on either side of the load. Okay, so uh, conceptually here, what should happen is that we should lose nothing in that wire, nothing in any of these connections, nothing in the switch, nothing in the connection, nothing in the connection, nothing in the wire nothing in the ground connection, nothing in the return path, nothing in this connection, and nothing in this connection. Well, 0 plus 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 0. First of all, two things about this. Um, if everything is 0, then we're good on cables and connections. Okay. The other thing is, this is how most of the manufacturers want you to do this test. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's stupid. And the reason it's stupid is because if I'm going to test the voltage drop across that battery connection and that battery connection and that connection there and this cable right there and that connection right there and that contact right there and that connection right there and that connection right there, that, right there, that wire right there, that connection right there, and then possibly this connection. All, okay, that's a lot of tests. And quite frankly, I don't want to be standing here, 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 while somebody that I don't know is going, no, 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 no. Well, by the time you get to the fifth test, the battery's going to be dead anyway. Okay? So taking all of these itty bitty numbers and adding them up is dumb. So what the starter buddy does, very simply, is it takes the voltage here and the voltage here and it subtracts. Okay? So in a perfect scenario, what's going to happen is the starter the cranking motor itself, not the contacts. Notice that I didn't put the contacts in there, but I do test across them because I only want to do two tests. If I put the connection here, then that's my starter, right? But in reality, electrically, that's it. So this should use 10 volts, okay? That's normal, but in truth, there's always going to be an itty bitty little bit of bit here, okay? Little itty bitty bitty bitty. Okay, there's going to be something here, 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 here. These are what are going to kill you. The connections. It ain't going to be the battery. It ain't going to be the starter. Okay? Might be the contacts. Maybe, maybe not. We can always test them. But the point is that 
all of these independent, all of these connections, and anywhere somebody may have poked a hole in a wire or something like that, um, anywhere there's corrosion, green crap, right? Green crap. Blah, green crap. Blah. Okay. That stuff is going to create a resistor. That resistor gets hot. That heat is energy that is stolen by corrosion that cannot be used by the motor so the motor runs badly. So you never ever 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 want to pull the starter if you know you have a cable problem which is the whole point of the starter buddy. Alright so let's look at a couple of scenarios here. All right, Battery, battery, and a battery. I may need another one down here. I don't know. Maybe three, maybe four. Battery. Okay. So, big cable, set of contacts. I'll draw them this way now. The starter motor is right next to the contacts. And then that goes to ground. Now, some of you may have a chassis ground on the starter. And just to tell you, you don't put it on the engine side of the starter, you put it on the starter side of the starter because you won't you don't want to include the connection between the the housing, the bell housing or whatever the housing is for the starter. You don't want that to be part of the test. So you need to stay as close to here as possible and as close to here as possible. That's critical for this test to work. Okay? Well let's say for the sake of argument that the starter is holding excuse me, the battery is holding 10 volts and the starter is using 10 volts. Okay? Well, this is going to happen a lot. This is a bad starter. Why? Well, because the voltage across the battery during crank here to here and the starter voltage drop from here to here are the same. Well, 10 volts minus 10 volts equals zero volts. This is a heck of a lot safer than going test, 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 test. Okay, the engineers don't get it, okay? Voltage drops can be subtracted as well as added, all right? So this voltage supply minus this voltage consumption equals this voltage missing. Well, guess what? No missing voltage. So this is clean, this is clean, and this is clean, and this is clean, and this is clean. So everything's clean because that and that are the same. Now, what's acceptable is a two percent loss by most estimations. Okay? So 2% of 10 volts is going to be 0.2, right? So you could lose 10, 2 tenths, so 10 and 9.8, 9.8, 9.6, okay? That's acceptable. All right? Well, what about this? All right, here's another one. Similar situation. I'll draw this kind of switch this time. There's your starter motor. There's your ground. Okay? All right, so the, the starter, let's say it's going to hold 10 volts. Uh, the battery is going to provide 10 volts. Okay? But let's say, in this case, the starter is only using 8 volts. Okay, well, the, the first question is, if the starter is only using 8 volts, do you expect it to work normally? No, I expect it to be slow. So my expectation is it's going to be slow, but it's because it's only getting 8 volts of energy instead of 10. Okay, so now, what do we do? We subtract. So 10 volts minus 8 volts equals 2 volts, which means somewhere in these connections, there is a um, resistance. Okay, so this ground strap, because everybody likes it to be the ground, we can just put the ground here and say that there's a resistor here. And it's using up 2 volts. Now that's quite a bit, but it does happen. Okay, so how does this work? Well, 2 plus 8 is 10. Voltage drops must add up to source voltage. Very simple. This has to be used up completely by the time it gets from here back around to here. Can't have anything missing. It's all got to be all got to be accounted for, which is why the adding up thing makes sense mathematically, but it makes terrible sense from a from an operational perspective. Okay. It's hard to do. This is easy to do. Okay, and this is what the starter buddy does. All right, now, so let's draw another one, 
and I'll go back to this type of contact again just to give you some exposure of that. There's my starter motor, cranking motor, whatever you want to call it. There's my ground. I get kind of sloppy with my ground sometimes. So let's say that this time the starter <laughs> battery is still um, working, but let's say it's only providing 7 volts. Okay? Well, 7 volts, that ain't enough. Okay? So 7 volts, uh uh, no good. Well, I don't expect the starter to turn normally if the battery is only providing 7 volts. Okay? It, it just can't do it. There's not enough energy. That's not enough energy to do the job. Okay? So then, what if we measure the voltage drop across the starter? What if we do the same test here? Well, what if we get 7 volts? Okay? Well, the first thing that this is telling me is that the, mo the starter motor is only using 7 volts. And it's going to turn. It's going to be slow. It has to be. It ain't getting enough energy. There's not enough horsepower here to do the job. But what does this also tell me? This also tells me that I do not have a voltage drop in the cables. Why? Because that number and that number are the same. What this shows me is that this 7 volts and this 7 volts, if we subtract it, then 7 volts minus 7 volts equals zero volts. Well, guess what? If there's no voltage lost, there's no voltage missing, then there's nothing in the circuitry that's consuming it. So that means the cables are fine. So this is probably a battery problem. It could be a starting problem. I don't know. Okay. But the point is, is that in both of these cases here, what you don't want to do is pull the starter. Because if you pull the starter, what you're doing is that you're ignoring the fact that the problem is actually not the starter. But I'm going to be honest. And don't, don't get upset at me for this because it's true. Mechanics go to the part. Okay. In mechanical applications, this is great. In electrical applications, um, this is bad. And the reason it's bad is because most electrical problems do not have part numbers. Most electrical problems do not have part numbers. So you want to assume wiring, assume wiring 80% of the time. Wire. Here's my silver marker. I guess it'll show up. Wire is the problem. 80%. Very simple. If you go out to any vehicle with an electrical problem and you assume it's a wire, you're going to be right 8 out of 10 times. So wanting to change that and wanting to pull that, bad idea. So there's the basic concept of the different voltages and the voltage drops across the different components. The goal is nothing in here, nothing in here, everything in here. This is the only time you pull the starter because this starter should be running fast. Should be fast. If it's not fast, then the problem is the starter. These two can't run fast because they're not getting enough horsepower to do the job. So, why would you pull them?